What is up everybody? It is Seppo Payo here and we are at Turku Open. I have a giveaway to announce. We got Prodigy BP1, we got eight discs, we got a water bottle, we got a towel and it's going to one of you guys. All you need to do is subscribe to MDG Media's YouTube channel, like the video and leave a comment down below. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the videos. Hey everybody, we are back for the final day of the FPO field at the 2024 Turku Open presented by Prodigy Disc. Amazing Luo Lavori Disc Golf Park, specially designed by Zeppo Payu. My name is Maxim Tange and with me, Andrew Gum. Pleasure to be here as always. Can't wait to watch this final round play out. It's going to be really exciting. Thank you all for joining. Thank you guys. It's really a pleasure to have you. It's late in the night again. Just to tear down the course, and uh, we are here to comment on the, our full fin card, you know. Stacked field, it's been a really exciting weekend at Luo Lavori. Beautiful course. Especially. And first, yeah, first on the tee, we'll have Silva Sarinen in the lead, 13 down, MVP Disc Sports representative. Yeah, what to say, she just won the last two events in Europe, and she's on fire right now. It's been amazing to watch. Second on the card, Hena Vomros, representing Innova Discs from Rauma, Finland, pretty nearby. Ton of power, great skills all around. Yeah, great throwing technique from Hena. And third on the card, we'll have Evelina Salonen representing Innova Discs, also from Finland. And yeah, what to say, a ton of power. Let's see if she's able to make something happen today. She's been having an incredible season. She's got a major win, elite win. Heidi Laine from Havanlinja. Clash Discs, super powerhouse, really good uh, quality player all around as well. Yeah, man, and uh, on to hole one. What, what to say about this one? Yeah, hole one's a pretty tough starting hole. Par four, 191 meters, two islands really. Uh, you know, you got this kind of OB river separating the two. Uh, basket here, but the OB pretty, pretty close on it. Yeah, you have two ways, you know, you can attack the second part of the fairway but you don't really need to put yourself in danger, so the safe way is the best one, just before the river to attack on the second shot. Yeah, it's usually quite windy in this exposed part of the course, when so and 11 most players are just lead sort of up there to the edge of the first First round. on the tee, with a score of 13 under par from Oitti, sponsored by MVP Discs and Power Grip. Put your hands together for Silva Saarinen. And Silva first on the tee, 13 down on the lead. Let's see if she's able to handle the pressure for the first elite win of his career. Her career, sorry for yeah, that. Yeah, she's, she's looking for the, the biggest win of her career, first elite win. She's got these two silvers in the bag already this year. She won her first uh, eight tier here back at the Tour Open in uh, 2022 when it was on the European Pro Tour. So she knows the venue well. She knows how to win here. Let's see if she can get it done with these superstars chasing her. Yeah, a ton of experience on on Hena's and Evelina's side. They know how to win a tournament for sure. Yeah. And that's a good start. A bit short, let's say, but she's definitely in position to attack the basket from there. Ten under par from Pirkala, sponsored by Innova and Power Grip, Evelina Salonen. Let's go. Yeah, what a season she's having. Yeah, as we, uh, as you were mentioning, two huge wins, one major in the States, one elite win in Copenhagen. Yeah, and she also and won an elite over the States too. So she's with a score three, of five actually, under like, really top from level wins this, just this year. Started off with the bang, took down oh, the major. Yeah, 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 right. Right, yeah, exactly, you're right. Oh yeah, three so wins. She, she's, yeah, I think she could definitely be a front runner at the moment for player of the year. I mean, it's still a lot of golf left to play for sure. Some big tournaments coming up here in Europe and then yeah. back for the Worlds. And She needs to keep the pace, definitely. And Heidi with a good start also. Yeah, a solid throw there. Yeah, the closest you are from that OB River, the better. Yeah, it makes that approach a little less scary, less distance you have to carry the OB. This one averaging 4.28 today, so not, not too bad. Mm. 
right in the middle as far as difficulty goes. Yeah, it needs to, bit, to be a bit more wide. But good shot inside the circle. First birdie opportunity for Evelina. And that's better from Hannah to me. Oh, that's really nice. Look at it. Tracking right towards the basket. Oh, just, yeah, barely made the... Kind of dropped the it. The inbounds, man. Silva goes a lot lower. Straight. And again, to me, it's... She's showing a lot of confidence going, you know, more straight to the basket. Not going for a wide sky hyzer shot. Yeah, getting more full flight out of the disc. That's kind of, she does have those nice laser lines, like these more power throws are, throws are ripping on hyzers up there, but she knows her disc well and she knows how to put good moves on them. It's quite a beautiful thing to watch. <laughs> and let's go, Heidi, C2, 12, 13 meters. Hmm, shy attempt from Heidi, catching the koozie. The line was not that bad. Yeah, right on line, but never had a chance. There you go. And that's the start she's looking for. One down through one. Nine meter putt to get it going. Right where she left off yesterday, she was on absolute fire. I mean, that was an incredible performance we saw on the green yesterday. One for the ages, really. In the wind, you know. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yesterday, second round, if you didn't see it from your own eyes, just go check it out. It was amazing, this golf on the FPO field. Yeah, and she's just putting on a putting clinic all weekend. I mean, it's really high level. And even from Evelina and Hannah, you know, it's different skill for for them. I'd say Heidi is, uh, is also the same. You know, they throw amazingly good. They have amazing control with the upshots. Everything is dialed uh, and they need to because there is a bit more struggle on their side on the dancing floor. And that's a huge difference be between Silva and the rest of the players in, the, in this group. Yeah, she is the highlight machine, incredible stuff. I mean, just doesn't seem to sweat it at all. Just puts it in the bucket, perfect pace every time. Here she goes. Is it too much inside? Oh. It is, it is, yeah. Is it good? No B signs. Sure looked like it was on the on the line. Maybe it's just in. Yeah, also a bit tight, a bit short for Hannah. But yeah, they they still have the angle to attack the basket from there. The difference between the MPO and FPO layout is huge on this hole. As you can see, if they are able to just go straight at the sweet spot, they are left with yeah, 60 meters, maybe 70 meters up shots to go to the pin. Yeah, exactly. Not the most demanding par four, but surprisingly averaging 4.76 today. Third most difficult, so. The wind was definitely up in the morning. And a bit of luck for Hannah on this one, going through the, the woods, the trees on the left. And yeah, there's, you know, been some ominous clouds all morning. Storms come in. Yeah, the weather was definitely yeah, not the best on this final day. It wasn't quite raining yet, but it was pretty clear we were in for a soggy day, thick clouds, and uh... and I'm pretty sure they didn't really get wet throughout the round. It's more during the MPO, the MPO round, there was a bit more struggle. Mm, not able to see what happened from the catch cam angle. She was safe off that tee shot, so just on the line there. Ooh, good line. Hena seems to be more comfortable from C2 than inside the circle. Good run on this one. See what for just a second birdie of the day here. Excuse me. Clutch. Dead clutch. center. Nothing to worry about. Four strokes on Hena, five on Evelina. Showing the pace, man. Yeah, well deep in circle two. Check it out, slow motion time. For sure, we have a slow-mo. Look at that extension. Isn't it perfect? Everything is absolutely perfect about that. It's dropping right in the basket, on point. Her aim is just unreal. She's a sniper. Yeah, we were talking about it during the second round. She's 
putting better than a lot of MPO players. She's, she's one of the best putters of all time, in my opinion, the way the pace and everything, you know, the aim. Putting te technique on top, that's for sure, you're right. The mind-body connection, you know, and the way she doesn't seem to be worrying about it at all. Like, she doesn't think about missing a putt. She just aims for the spot and just connects. That's her, a skill, her, mental yeah. skill. Her, her routine is so quick, you know, she doesn't sit there and think about it, about anything. Just like, she picks the point on the basket she wants to hit and then she nails it almost every time. Yeah, perfect mix between the push and the spin putt, in my opinion. N no danger of speeding out or anything. That's just, yeah, greatness. Yeah, just a master, master class of her craft. Yeah. Incredible weapon on the green. That putt is beautiful. Hole three, par three, 82 meters. Got to get under that fallen tree. It's kind of diagonally crossing the, the tee pad. Then you got to beat these late trees. Quite a low shot required downhill. Pretty short par three for this, this level, but quite tricky and very technical. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the entire group is going with the back end. And to me, it's not the best option, but they control it better, apparently. So yeah, low shot, late turn, trying to yeah, keep your line as low as possible to miss those branches. Yeah, she's in circle one. I've seen a lot of really great forehands this weekend on this one, but they, they do tend to kind of skip OB on the right side from time to time if you're not careful, if you kind of put a little too much hyzer on it. But definitely shapes up good. These these backhand shots, though, that, yeah, that's a really touchy one. Yeah, and you, you don't really need to have that late turn. I'm talking about it because it would be the perfect shot, but if you, go, if you just go straight, as you can see, everybody in the group is around the basket. Yeah, you can see that edge of that bullseye ring actually lines up like quite perfectly with the tee pad for a straight shot. So even though it looks like you need to turn a lot left to right there off the tee, you're, you're so right. A straight shot will give you a you know, four or five meter putt quite often. Yeah, you're right. Oh, nice. look at that highlight from Haiti. And sometimes she misses, sometimes from C2 she's dialed. And here you can see perfect one. Yeah, 12 meters. On the money, great highlight from her. And mm, yeah, yeah, not able to connect. Third birdie opportunity, not able to capitalize. Creative camera angle there through Proctor's leg. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I, was it. I like it. Going to mention it. Uh, just a little shy on that attempt from Evelina. Oops. That one, a little, a little wide right. Kind of looked like it stayed in her hand a little bit longer than the u the normal release. So. After a you know perfect start, starting to show maybe a little, little signs of nerve. She's got that first elite series win in sight. She's got a four-stroke lead there. I don't know. She's just you maybe. know she can miss some. Yeah, of no course, worries. of course. And it was not that bad, you know. Just no, no, it catching caught the rim there. Exactly catching Nubs the cage, the and some scoreboard check. So in the lead, and as we mentioned yesterday, the gap between the chase and the lead is so huge. Some of my favorite discs in my bag are the A-series discs. They're the ones I lean on to get close to the basket, and each of them have a consistent grip. So as you cycle through the series, you won't have to change the way that you hold the disc. These are torque-resistant discs that are more stable than the PA series, provide a consistent fade at the end of the flight. The best way to find your flight is to get out and use these discs yourself. Yeah, thanks to Prodigy for putting this event and just, yeah, they, they made something huge happen on the, during the, the entire weekend. So go check out the discs and everything, man. Yeah, they do so much for the sport and they put on an incredible event here. So well organized such a fun thing really really been awesome hole four par five 228 meters way uphill ob right and left you need a lot of power but this lead card's got that for sure some of the furthest throwers in the game yeah, exactly you're trying to get as much distance as you can of the tee and you have two choices you go you try to stay up the hill right side or just go left and you will see there is that tree in the middle of the fairway on your second shot 
the FPO field don't really need to get too much aggressive on this one to me. Yeah, in my opinion, five. it's a par five, so they can like placement shot on the first, placement shot on the second, and upshot to the basket. Yeah. I won't say it's an easy birdie, but uh, for the, the lead card and with the distance they have. Yeah, if you just stay in bounds, you should be up there putting. I mean, Silva early released it into that tree there, but I'm not counting her out for the birdie still. You know, a couple big rips and she'll be up there. Let's see. Good move on that one. Yeah, Slides she just up. passed that tree in the middle. Still some distance to fight with to go to the pin. But again, you can miss one of the um, of your shots. Yeah, and still get there. You just got to keep it in bounds on this one. That's the main thing because the OB will creep in. You know, you see you see quite a lot of OB strokes on this one. Seven today from the field. So 5.12 average, not too bad. Third easiest, tied for third easiest on the course today. So mm, fading early. Yeah, there you see yeah. OB stroke. That's OB. Evelina struggled a little bit on this hole with the OBs anyway. Yesterday she had that amazing par save, skipping off the top of that stake, and then Haiti just way off on that one. Just sails OB. And as you mentioned, Silva is still able to go for the bird. Yeah. She'll be inside the circle. Yeah, you just need two two really solid, you know, shots and even even with that kind of shank off the tee, she's still putting for birdie, well inside her range. And Hena will be left with a five to six meter spot to save the par after the OB stroke. Same for Heidi, same kind of distance, good tester. Seal were looking to join the Estonians with the, for the only birdies on the day. Yeah, she gets it. Kaidi, Anneli, and Maria all, all collecting the birdie as well. Solid putt there, three, three through four. She doesn't look like she's sweating it. Yeah, and at the same time, Evelina and Hena are really struggling on the green. Yeah, just like that. Five stroke lead opened up. Oh man. Hena unable to connect from short distance. They really gotta tighten up this putting if they wanna get this victory. I mean, Silva's not gonna, you know. Slow lead. down. Yeah, she just put on the gas here. You're gonna have to pick up the pace, especially on the green. There you go, coming back for the bogey. It was late, high right. So now Hannah's six strokes back. Third and place. Evelina is second now. Solo clean score. Scorecard for Evelina, just missing some more opportunities. And on two hole five. Par three, 90 meters, super tight tunnel gaps here multiple options though about three different lines you could choose different shot shapes last birch here to beat on the green is about circle's edge yeah there i'd say the main option is on the right side just yeah hyzer release make it flat it's the yeah, casual way to go to the basket but silva is making me lie and she's outside, that's the most important thing, just trying to get out of those woods. Yeah, this was her only real hiccup yesterday's round, went OB and ended up having to hit a big C2 putt for the double bogey. Had had a hard time scrambling up to the pin. Look at that wind ripping. Storm's coming. Yeah. You can feel it in the air, you can see it all around, dark clouds. That's a bit late for Evelina, catching some trees on the right side. She'll be stuck from there. She'll need to scramble to save the bar. And I'm going with that hyzer line. That's looking Over better. This skipping up to the circle's edge. Nice yeah, shot. hopefully she's able to make this one. Oh, Evelina's forehand doesn't get far. Only progresses about 10 meters. Has to do another little forehand chip out. And looks like she's gonna drop at least one stroke back to Silva here. Yeah, that's better. Haiti, ooh, good run there. Oh, just like it looked like it hit the cage. Hannah comes up short, frustrated, slaps her leg. She really wants it, but didn't like fully extend into the chains. And Silva, another sweet birdie right there. Four down, four down through five holes. 
marching towards her first Fiscal Pro Tour Elite Series win. Incredible performance she's had this weekend. This is just like mind blowing how, how hot she is right now. Those putts are on point. Seven strokes. Yeah. Solid. And then Evelina tied now at 10. Haiti is nine, no, yeah, 11 strokes behind. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen some huge comebacks, you know, especially in Copenhagen. So just, yeah, Silva needs to be a bit careful. But seven strokes is definitely a great advantage. Let's see if she's able to keep the pace. Off to the races keep it here. Cool. I mean, yeah. And hole six now. Yeah, signature hole, part three downhill, 111 meters, top of the mountain. You can see the whole beautiful city of Turku all around. What a beautiful spot to launch some discs. Yeah, I can't agree more. Tough drop Best. zone here though, so you want to keep it in bounds. Wind can be a major issue. Oh, is that a mistake now? Yeah, that never had a chance. Turned over in the wind, long gone. Yeah, okay, so now we have our yeah. Yeah, first mistake from Silva. Almost, mistake. you know, I mean, okay, she had that tough hole on five yesterday, but she's been playing quite flawlessly. So, first glimmer of hope here for the other ladies on the card. Let's see if they can put it close and try to put a little pressure on her with a potential two stroke swing or more. Yeah, is she around the circle? Yeah. A bit short. Yeah, and good shot. C2, I believe. And as you were mentioning, the, the drop zone is really tough. Still some 50 to 60 meters up shot to fight. Yeah, you, you'll be in position to to save a par if you are able to save a bogey. That's if you're great. able to yeah, find some touch on this one. Good, good approach from Silva. Yeah, nicely done with that gusty wind, keeping it low, trusting her disc. Ends up about five meters, and she's golden from that range and way beyond. Oh, nubs. Yeah, another decent run. Not able to stay into the chains. And has been real close, you know, hitting the basket a lot, but just, oh, oh. look at that. Evelina showing some class on the green. Getting nice. under oh. par for the round. Taking two strokes at least. Making it more interesting. Oh, and that putt was slightly right side low. Yeah, same kind of a... Uh, it could have been the same mistake as she made on hole, hole three. three. Yeah, it was similar. Looked like it just kind of didn't want to come out right on right on that, that kind of pop like normal. Slightly late, late releasing it or something. Yeah, five strokes now between Silva and Evelina. So nothing new yeah. from the split screen. Everything is happening on the lead card onto hole seven. Hole seven, par four, 178 meters. Pretty tight OB on the left side. Also on the right, but doesn't come into play too often. There's so many trees over there that'll stop you if you end up over there. There's that really late gap moving left to right. Not, not the longest par four, but pretty technical and quite demanding, a little bit downhill. Yeah, everything is about that first shot. If you are able to stay in bounds as straight as possible, control the turn not to end up in those trees right side. Same with the fade. There is the OB all along the left side. Hmm, not happy, overturned. Yeah, Hannah made the opposite mistake she made yesterday where she faded out on the left side. That's Those a tricky, tricky shot of the tee. It is, it is for sure. 4.36 average, so. And that's drifting left. And it does trickle OB. Second mistake. So just when we thought Silva was running away with it, now she's kind of just cracked the door open a little bit, giving some hope. Yeah, we still need for, still, still need for Evelina and Hannah to find a way to make those putts. It's pretty important for, for, for them right now. Yeah, 
and uh, mm. looks like she gets caught up around the gap there. Probably gonna have to settle for par now. And as you can see, it's pretty hard to get out, get out of those woods when you're stuck in that right side. Silva OB, but you can see she's lined up nicely with the gap. And she puts a pretty good move on this one, slides up right there inside the circle. Yeah, a bit short, eight meters. We know she can do this. Haiti smashing a forehand right under the bucket. Really nice shot. Let's see, Hena, not able to find any birdie on the first six holes. Super nice touch there, securing the par. You can see the focus of our four players. Okay, Silva was outside the circle. Just a little bit high though, right on line, hits the band. Yeah, good line. In the end, just too high. Bogey for Evelina after being on that right side. And yeah, that tree. second shot was yeah. hard. Didn't didn't progress much. Haiti, tap in birdie. Good birdie, and just like that, she's approaching and getting closer from Evelina and Hena. Yeah, sneaking Only up. Only three strokes. Sneaking up towards that podium, making a run for it. Clean, two down, solid shooting. Hole eight, par three, 88 meters. Quite a bit downhill. Tight gap here, and then moving left to right to the elevated pin. Shapes up perfectly for a forehand, but we've seen Silva just doing some incredible moves on the backhand line too. Almost aced it yesterday. Yeah, we are into the, the easier stretch on the course. Hole eight, hole nine. You need to take some birdies on those holes. And hole eight is definitely a forehand line if you have the skill and the control, oh. great shot. Unfortunately, not able to hit. Yeah, skips a little bit long. Still inside the circle, but it was really close to hitting the base, and it would have been a really easy tap in after yeah, that. Common mistake from Hena. She been struggling. Late release. Yeah. Did the same thing. Ouch. Same oh. for Evelina. Let's see Silva's line. Only going for the back end. Much more technical shot, but this one's way early. She looks frustrated about that. A few, a few mistakes tough. in a row, really. Yeah. Like that's three bad tee shots in a row, and we're starting to wonder now. That that's a really tough line for the back end. Sure you need to go straight with a with an understable disc, late turn. Yeah, you gotta really trust it. You gotta get the height, angle. Yeah, there is that OB line on the left side. If you go too straight, you're going there, that's for sure. So look at that, after that flaming hot start, Silva's starting to struggle. She's gonna have a big putt left to avoid that three bogeys in a row. Here she is, nine meters. Oh. Off the top again, just as... Unfortunate, twice the yeah. same, catching the bend, aggressive line. I think she can't really be mad, mad at that. You no. know, sometimes it doesn't no. go in. Yeah, exactly. Just just an inch or two too high. There is wind to contend with. I mean, still putting, oh, geez. Four meters. Evelino also hits the band. She really needed that. Could have had a two-stroke swing again. The thing is, yeah, if they let those opportunities go away, they won't be able to go back at Silva. And especially on that easier stretch I was mentioning earlier. Yeah, this is one you really want to get, you know, pretty short hole. Only three birdies on the day from the FPO field. Yeah, you were saying, saying it yesterday, but for the MPO field, it's the easier hole. It's and the easiest for, Yeah, for the FPO, it's not the case. Yeah, 3.28 average, so right in the middle. On to hole nine. Hole nine, quite a short par four, but pretty uphill. Quite a lot of stuff in the way. You got these uh, trees on the right and left, and then this one that's, you know, quite grabby as well. FPO basket to the left there. Yeah, quite an attackable par four, I mean. Yeah, my bad, we are showing the MPO baskets on this drone shot. It's, yeah, shorter and earlier on the left side. 
Yeah, easiest hole on the course for the FPO, 3.48 average. It's been been the easiest every round, so might need to be reassessed for next season. Yeah. And that's a common mistake for Heidi catching the branches on the right side. We haven't That'd had be any, too high. Yeah, any eagles yet. I thought we might get one. If anyone can do it, it's this lead card. That's oh yeah. Rip, but can it beat that right side? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Way up there. Mm, would She's have like been 20 nice. meters past that tree. It would have been nice to see the basket on that catch cam angle. Yeah, a bit low, but right side, she has an open angle to go to the basket from there. Yeah, twice too early on hole two, she made the, the same kind of shot. Super hyzer, early release. Silva's up shot. Yeah, good touch Solid. for Silva. She's looking to get off that bogey wagon, get the birdie train, back rolling. But her lead is shrinking, even though, you know, it's not... Nothing major at yeah, the moment, five yeah. strokes. Yeah, Henna and Evelina really failing to fully capitalize on the mistakes, but slowly gaining back some strokes. Yeah, and the thing is, the, the back nine is tougher than the, the first nine holes, so Silva needs to be careful. It's so easy to lose two, three strokes on one hole on this course. Hole 14, hole 16, tough ones. Solid birdie. Yeah, well needed after the three bogeys in a row, two down on the round. Yeah, great way to finish the front nine. Flaming hot start, slowed down, but Evelina gets her birdie. She was almost in circle two on that drive, I think right on the edge of circle two. Just a little approach and Hannah with a nice birdie. She's only uh, four strokes back now. So, yeah, what a great front nine. It's pretty, pretty dramatic. Looks like, you know, I mean. So it's a good start from Silva. And then yeah. just, uh, yeah, so. starting to, to have a bit more trouble, yeah, more, more troubles, let's say. Just two bend on the, on the green, good, good lines, just uh, not able to, to find a good height. And just Hannah and Evelyn are struggling on the, the green. It's pretty really common those past few days, but yeah, let's see what's gonna what's gonna happen on the back nine. They they need to find a way to take those opportunities if they want the win. They have nine holes to make it happen. Yeah, they gotta push. Make sure you come back to see the exciting conclusion of the Torku Open here on MDG Media, Europe's disc golf hub. Yeah, see you on the back nine, guys.